All right, guys, so in the last video, I showed you guys how to store numbers in variables. But did y'all know that you can also store different types of data in variables? I'm talking not only numbers, but you can also store text, words, dates, logic, and we'll talk about logic later on, but it's pretty much like true and false, and we'll see why that come in, comes in handy later on. But all this different crap we can store inside variables. Now, whenever we do that, sometimes R needs to figure out exactly what type of data you're storing. So let's go ahead and uh, do something cool right now. So say that inside the variable A, we want to store the number 32. And inside the variable B, we want to store the word Bucky. So what we can do is we can actually use a function in R to figure out what type of data is stored inside a variable. And to do that, you use the function called, okay, hit caps lock there, class. Now, the piece of information that you need to give this function is the name of the variable. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna tell you what type of data is stored inside A. And let's go ahead and do the same thing for B. Uh, B. So let's go ahead and run this. And it says, all right, we're setting our variables right here. A, which is 32, is numeric, and B, which is Bucky, is character or text, basically. That's what character means. So this is helpful, let's say, um, let's say you're making a program that the person needs to enter their age, so they enter a number. You wanna make sure that it is numeric. If they enter something like Bucky for the age, you'd be like, hey, that's character, ain't numeric, try again, Haas. So, actually, let me guys let me show you something else helpful for that. There's also another function that we could use called is numeric, and it could tell you if the variable is numeric or not. So sometimes you just want to test if the variable is one specific type of data. So let's go ahead and set a equal to. We'll use different kinds of numbers here. Actually, I can type it out. I don't need to copy it. I'm not that lazy. All right, so A is equal to 423. B is equal to negative 8. C will set equal to 32 in some random decimal places. And we'll set the variable D equal to the word poop. Yes, it's immature, but hey, so am I. All right, so in order to test if a variable is numeric, what we can do is we can use is dot numeric and then inside that type the variable name. So let's do it for A, B, C, and D. B, C, and D. So let's go ahead and run all of this and I'll explain to you guys what happened. So right now we're just setting all the variables A, 423, is numeric so it says yes it is numeric true negative 8 is numeric as well 32.5345 is also numeric a decimal place still numeric poop however poop is not a number so that would be false so maybe this would come in handy if you're making a uh, I don't know, a program for like bank accounts or something where people can have all of these in their bank account. Maybe this guy went into some debt. Maybe this guy, I don't know, maybe it's a Bitcoin account or something. However, if they, uh, you know, try to send like poop amount of dollars, you can't do that, Haas. That would be false. That's where you can use the is numeric function. So anyways, that is different types or a few different types of data that you can store in variables. Um, we'll cover dates and also logic later on when the time is right. But for now, I just want to show you guys that there are indeed different types of data that you can store. And there are also some cool functions that you can use depending on which type of data you use.